myself, but uh, I'm Musoa and I'm here on behalf of APAC. So a warm welcome to all of you. And um, I have the pleasure of introducing this course's trainers. Um, and well, yeah, just to, just to say hello to you. So let me start with Raquel, Raquel Joaquin, who's our teacher extraordinaire. Um, she's a member of APAC and she's in charge of social media. And so all these cool posts and animations are basically her creation together with Angels, who's also on the creative team. Um, she's got over eight years experience teaching and she passed her uh, public exams two years ago. She's teaching in uh, secondary and she's got lots of experience with new technologies, techniques, how to make classes entertainment, entertainful and um, fun. And so you'll definitely have a great time with her and learn loads. So you might have watched her capsules in last year's APA convention. And if you haven't, don't, don't miss them. So, all right, second place, uh, we have Anna Anna Sian. She's a literature expert and she was already a trainer for the OPOS course uh, in Rosas Mentat together with APAC a couple of years ago. Um, she also passed her public exams for secondary and she's currently a secondary teacher and a teacher at the UPF Masters in secondary. So she's got both the perspective of the teaching, so students real students in the real classroom and also future teachers in future classrooms. So that's a double sort of take on um, the teaching issue. And last but not least, Edward Lockhart, who couldn't be here, unfortunately, with us today. He's the course coordinator and he's got over 15 years experience as an OPOS trainer and 12 years experience as a trainer for the Departamento de Educación. Um, he also passed his public exams first for primary uh, with a 10 in the oral defense, so speechless. And um, more recently, he passed the public exams again for secondary with the highest mark on his board. So I think that that leaves no, no comments to be made, basically. Um, there you go. I, I think it's undeniable that the team is pretty solid and very, very experienced. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open the floor for uh, Raquel, who's going to start telling you all about how the course is going to work and how the sessions are going to be divided. But like we said, if you have any questions, feel free to maybe um, type them up in the chat and we'll make sure to answer them maybe at the end of the presentation or as they come. If you want, we can we can do both. OK, so anyway, thanks so much. I'm going to mute myself. Thank you, Soa. Thank you for the introduction. So yes, as Soa said, well, hello, everybody. Thanks for being here today on a Saturday morning. So um, we are going to tell you, Anna and I, we are going to tell you how the course works, the dynamics, basically. And then um, we are going to try to answer some frequently asked questions for you. And then you will have the time, the opportunity to ask us anything you want to know about the course, about the OPOS, about anything you want to clarify today. So let's get started. Um, I don't know if you are aware of how um, OPOS were like two years ago and all this time ago, but the focus was basically on the practical part, on the syllabus creation and on the practical case. And the topic units were just the 15% of the final mark. But this year is gonna be very different from what it was before. Because as you can see here on the image, um, the first part you will have to do is to write, to express the topic unit. So this is gonna be the 60% of the final mark. And then what they said, because as you know, the convocatoria hasn't been published yet. What they said is that you will have to defense a unit. Here you can see B.2, exercise practice, this is theoretically, this is only for vocational training teachers. So uh, secondary teachers won't have to do that. Theoretically, we will see everything when convocatoria is published, because as you know, um, when you decide you want to sit the opposite exam, you have to read and analyze the convocatoria in detail. Because there you will have everything uh, you will need to know. For example, you will have um, how you can do your presentation. If you can take um, a presentation, if you will have access to a computer or not, if the presentation is only two slides or you can have more slides, if you can have a paper with you just to check your notes, anything. So everything 
it's there. So as I have said, we have to wait for convocatoria. And once we have the convocatoria, we will analyze it and we will give you more detail in the course. So the topic units this year are gonna be very important. And then um, let's move on to the course dynamics for you to know how we are gonna work on that. And Anna is gonna tell you about it. Sorry, I was muted. Um, I cannot see the slide very well. I don't know why. Okay. Um, the, although the theoretical uh, topics are very important, we're not going to give you a massive list of topics already developed for you because there are many um, academies which do that. We're going to give you examples of the most important topics and Part of these examples um, will be um, possibly very useful for many different topics. Um, but the idea is that you will develop them collaboratively during the sessions that you will have with us. So we will give you two or perhaps one, two, depending on you know, the section. We have divided the topics into three basic sections, grammar, um, then literature and culture, and methodology, learning and acquisitions, things like that. So we're going to give you the basics of each of these, you know, uh, different um, types of topics um, and, as, and ideas on how to develop any, um, any topic, but only ideas. Uh, you, you will work on them in collaboration with two or three people if, if, if there are enough participants uh, to, to do the course. Um, we will not give you like individual feedback after the sessions. The feedback will be oral and it will take place during the course. Um, it's a 50 hour course, so there will be plenty of time if you work you know, on your own um, throughout the week to clarify any doubts that you may have um, while we're in the course. Um, but or, uh, feedback will be oral. Um, I think that's it. No, sorry. Would you like to add anything, Raquel? Yes, that we are not correcting, apart from uh, what you said, Anna, we are not correcting the units on a written basis. We won't correct the written units. Anna's, Anna, well, Anna said it very well before. Um, you will have the individual tutoring at the end of the sessions, the last three sessions. Yeah. Uh, and it will be an oral feedback. That's important to know. Because we won't want, uh, Anna, well, you said it before, um, this is not based on giving you a lot of theory because you have to make the topic yours. And that's what makes you get a good grade in the exam. You have to make it yours. So we will give you the outline of the main unit of each block. We will divide everything, the 69 units into different blocks because this is gonna be very good for you to study them because once you, for example, when you address the text, the text units, the text block, you have a lot of units there. But if you create a common introduction for all of them, a common conclusion for all of them, it's going to be very easy for you to study them. But you have to make it yours. So we will give you the key elements of each unit, of each block, and you will have to create yours. This is going to make the difference. If you just study by heart the units, this is not going to make the difference. So that's why we are not giving you, we are not making you write and learn by heart something and then correct it. No, we will give you oral feedback, like for example, hey, you could introduce this in that section, or you could apply that, for example, we always recommend um, that the units are divided into 80% theory, the theory part, but you have to include a practical application of all of that. So you have to say how you would uh, use that in your classrooms. So we can tell you, hey, you could um, add this or you could uh, use it in a different way. Or you could, for example, imagine you say um, regarding grammar, I'm using this in my classroom or this is important. Everything in this unit is important in my classroom because my students need to learn this in this way. So we can tell you, hey, apart from this way, you can also do that. We can give you ideas. So this is what we are going to be doing mm. throughout the course. The course is a guide because you know that teachers, we are guides for our students. We guide them into the learning process. 
Mm -hmm. So this is what we are trying to do here as well. And we're going to guide you through the topics and through the teaching units as well. And if there's a practical case, then we would also guide you through that in the last part of the course. Yes, that's right. Because um, studying by heart, we won't want you to die like you can see in the meme here. So uh, there was something when I was preparing for my for my opus, uh, there was something I learned for, from Edward, who's not here today. And he said something which I think is very interesting. The opus process also makes you learn, also makes you a better teacher in the sense of learning. It doesn't mean if you pass an opus test, it doesn't mean you are better than somebody else. No, but you may have learned something new, something you can apply, something you can change, you know? So this was something that made me think, hey, I don't want to address all this time because I started like two years before. I don't want to address all of this, like not being able to leave my house or not being able to live my life for two years. No, I just want to learn. Of course, I'm going to take it seriously, but I want to learn, but I also want to go to the gym. I also want to live my life. And this is the way I did it. And it worked. <laughs> so that's why we're saying, well, Anna, if you want to continue. Well, um, the course is practical because we're going to precisely develop both the units and the teaching units. Uh, sorry, the topics and the teaching units um, in small groups of so three, four people, perhaps. Um, so we're going to practice what we want our students to do, which is to share um, materials, to share our ideas, to try to think of a, of a good you know, final product. And the final product will be the text that we will write for the, um, uh, what you call it, the Altima. Um, or the teaching plan that we have to either write there uh, at the very moment or present if finally we have to, to present our, our teaching unit. But we're going to learn from one another um, because even though um, the trainees are theoretically um, competing, um, they are also collaborating. And they, all, they will only compete if they're in the same tribunal in the end. If not, they, they won't compete one against the other. So the best thing is to learn from one another. Um, it's going to be practical, basically, and collaborative. And, and then this is what we were saying before. We will give you example of the main topics of the three different sections that we have been you know, telling you about, the, the literature and culture, the methodology, and also the more grammar and vocabulary based um, topics. Um, we're gonna give you some guides and some examples on, you know, other topics, and then uh, we will ask you to to work in groups and to present, um, you know, your work to the rest of the group. And this will also give you practice for, you know, when you are in presenting to the real panel. Yeah? So you will. I mean, it, although this is only a, a a course in which we are studying, um, you will get nervous because you will have worked, you know, hard to present to, to uh, on a topic or on a teaching unit, and you will have to present it to your peers, and uh, and you get nervous. And it's good that you realize how you can control your nerves uh, while we're doing this course, because then when the real thing, you know, when, when you're in the, in, in the real presentation, you will already have experience in controlling your nerves and you will realize that you, that you can do it. And that's it. Yes, I would like to add that we will also give them a layout to create um, the unit, the didactic unit. So you will have a layout and also an example, a very good example for you to have um, clear how to do it properly. And we will also give you all the steps to follow to create, um, well, to write your, your unit and to write the topic as well, because there are some steps, some tips to be followed, something that ca you cannot miss, like, for example, the references at the end. So we will give you everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Now, well, this is uh, the distribution of the units of the sessions uh, we are going to do. We are going to start with a welcome and in which we tell you about the competency-based planning and assessment. We make everything clear for you in that session. Then we will have um, the language and grammar, uh, as Anna said, because everything is connected. So you can use, um, as we said before, what you create for a unit can be used for an, a different one as well inside the same section, right? Then we have the uh, literature and culture, and then the language teaching acquisition and other topics, right? Then um, you can see here the last ones because all the sessions before, session one, two, four, until 10, they are four hour sessions, right? But the last ones, the practical ones are five hours. They're gonna last for five hours. So you will have to be with us on Saturday <laughs> for five hours, right? And in these sessions, we will be practicing. You will be practicing, as Anna said, you will be trying to control your nerves and we will give you all the feedback. Mm -hmm. Okay. Something very important for you to know is that the sessions won't be recorded as you can be here. Why not? Because some of the years the sessions were recorded and we found out that our sessions were all over the internet. So, I mean, as you can see, the price is very competitive. So um, we don't really deserve to be all over the internet. That's why we are not recording the sessions. If you have any questions, anything you've missed, you can tell us in the next session. Um, we will clarify, as Anna said before, we will clarify that in the following in the following session. So if we start on a Saturday, sorry, we will, and you miss that session, we will clarify again any questions you may have in the next one. And um, this is what you said, Anna. I think you said it right. So that's why I think we haven't said it. Sorry, that's why it's very important for you to work at home. So. We start on a Saturday, you were home during the week, and then you ask us anything you want in the next session, and we will give you oral feedback. So if you missed the session because something happened to you, uh, you can ask us anything, right? But they won't be recorded. And the price, if you are an APAC member, the price is 450, as you can see here. If you're not a member or you're not a member yet, the price is 550. But if you become a member, the fee is 42 euros. So, I mean, you still save uh, 58 if I'm not wrong. So I think you should become a member <laughs> to save some money. You can still save 58 euros, which is very good to have some beers after all the sessions. <laughs> then we are going to move on to some frequently asked questions. Let's see if these are the ones you have. If not, you can ask us anything or you can ask us anything during those questions as well. So we've got here, which key concepts do I need to know before making the presentation? Well, as I said before, we will give you everything you should address in the, in the presentation. But apart from that, in, in the convocatoria, you will have everything. So you will, you will have to be talking about gender perspective, inclusion, uh, the competency-based learning, um, the assessment, uh, all the, I mean, all the laws and decrees and everything. So how should I structure it? You should structure your presentation um, according to what Convocatoria said, because in the past it was, you had like, uh, if I'm not wrong, you had 10 minutes or 15 minutes, I think it was for the whole syllabus, assessment criteria, the center, uh, the location, you know? And then you had the rest of the time to defend the unit. But this year is gonna be different. So we have to wait until Convocatoria is published to know the time you have to do everything. And then do I have to include really innovative methodologies? Innovative methodologies are important, but you have to be able to justify what you are saying. I mean, they want to see teachers and they want to see people who know what they are doing. So if you go there and you want to show that you uh, teach uh, or you follow a PVL methodology, but you haven't done it, you've never done it before, they are going to know. I mean, they are also teachers. So if you are talking about flipped classroom, that's what's 
the uh, the methodology I was well the main methodology because you know I think there is not a methodology the methodology always caters for diversity so uh, the one well one of the ones I used innovative ones was flip classroom and I said hey flip classroom well I didn't say hey actually <laughs> I said uh, flip classroom is not just watching a video no so this is very important you have to read you have to know what you're talking about Anna, do you have anything to add? Mm, no, thank you. Okay. Should I find a study group or is it better to prepare it on my own? It really depends on you. You have to feel comfortable. So whatever makes you feel comfortable with, this is what you should do. In my case, I didn't want to know about any, anybody else. You know, I didn't want to know what uh, Pepita was doing or what Pepita had studied in that day because that used to put a lot of pressure on me. So I didn't find a study group. I did it on my own because I think, uh, for example, if, I mean, nobody can study the same way and you know it. And apart from that, uh, some days are good for you. Some days are bad. You have bad days. We all have bad days. On bad days, I can't study. Some days after work, I can't study. And that doesn't make you worse. I mean, you have your own pace your own pace, sorry. So this is what you should do. Do whatever makes you feel comfortable. That's it. And Anna, do you have anything? Unless perhaps you really trust somebody who's going to work as much as you, and then it might be useful. Yes. This is like, I mean, students, our students, some of them want to go to the library. Some others just don't go to the library. Some others studying groups because um, they have a friend who helps them and, and they help others, you know? So it really depends on the person. That's a very personal question. Mm -hmm. What part is more important and where should I put most of my effort? Well, as I said at the beginning of the presentation, um, in the last edition, um, the focus was on the syllabus and the practical case. And this year it's different, but you have to prepare everything because if you learn the units, uh, the topic units, sorry, um, this is what you need to create your own didactic unit. You need theory to create your own didactic unit. And that's the way you should study it. You should address it. That's why the, uh, this course is a guide and it helps you make it yours. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'd like to add that um, because everything, as you were saying, is interrelated uh, mm -hmm. and you have to prepare very well for the topics. Um, just as I was saying, the last part of the topic, we usually recommend that you um, include some pedagogical applications. In the beginning, probably you need to relate the topic to the um, competencies and how they are explained. Um, and the knowledge al sabes in the how they are specified in the curriculum so it's not that only the topics the theory but it's to to, to let the the panel know that you know everything as you develop the topic so you're already developing something practical in the in the in the conclusion the body as it were the knowledge in the body of the essay and in the introduction i think it's important to relate it to the competencies as as they are specified in the, in the curriculum. So everything is there, although it's only the topic. Yeah, yeah, it's totally right. How can I control my nerves? Well, everybody's nervous. You have to know that what you prepare, it's something yours. They don't know it, they don't know about it. You are the expert, you are the teacher, and you're gonna show them how you do your lessons. That's the only thing you have to bear in mind. You will be nervous. Everybody's nervous. I'm nervous. I was nervous before today's presentation. So we are nervous all the time. Sometimes we are nervous before um, a, new, a new class, new students, you know, before giving a class or before, you know, it, it always depends on the day and you will be nervous. But you have to bear in mind that you are the expert. You know what you're talking about. Of course, if you copy um, the didactic unit from somebody else, you don't know what you're talking about. But if you've, if you've done it yourself, you know what you're talking about. If you miss something, they won't know. Mm -hmm. 
So it's basically if you do your work with time and if you rehearse at home various times, um, there will be a moment when you are tired, you're, you think that you may not gonna, um, you know, uh, pass that you, um, that you feel down, but that's, that may, that, you know, this, this is not necessarily how you're going to feel, you know, the last day, it's only a process. And if you feel like that, it's important to rehearse again and again and again until you know that you can do it in the end. So if you, I mean, it's important to, to make mistakes at the beginning and to realize that you need to practice more until you, you make it, you know, perfect. Yeah, and I also think it's, or for me, it was something I had, I, I created that. So I wanted to tell everybody, I wanted to show everybody yeah. what I had created. Yeah. So I think it's a good opportunity as yeah. well. Of course, that day you're nervous, but it's your opportunity to to bright, to be bright, you know, yeah. so to shine <laughs> like the stars, yeah. but it's yours and you have created it and, and you can use it afterwards. There are many people who say, hey, the didactic unit I created cannot be used anymore. I use it in my lessons. Why not? You know what I mean? So you can use it. Hmm. Is it possible to pass the first time? Can I pass with no merit? Am I on time? Yes, you are on time, especially this year. Um, is it possible to pass the first time? Yes, it is. I passed the first time. It's difficult. You need to you need to get a very good mark. I got a 9.5 in the syllabus and a 9 as an average mark. And I had no merits. Well, I had some, well, I had some courses. But um, I had no experience at all in the public system. I had experience in the private one, but not in the public one because uh, the year, uh, well, the day it was published, um, I had been working for <laughs> two days. So two days of experience in the public sector that time. So yes, you can pass, you need a very good mark and a very good grade, but yes, it's possible, but difficult. So Anna, I don't know if you have anything to say here. Mm. No, no. You can pass, yes, of course. Okay, I'm very good with, with technology. Should I bring an awesome digital presentation to my defense? Well, we answered the question before. It really depends on what Convocatoria said, says, sorry, and it really depends on your board. Because, you know, in some schools where you're going to do the defense, um, there are computers, but in some others, there aren't. So it really depends on the board, what the board says. Is there only one right answer to each question? Of course not. There are multiple answers to every question. Mm -hmm. And it really depends on how you do it. It's you who's telling us that. Are there, um, uh, is there an only way to make your students speak in your lessons? No, there are multiple. So the same here. That's what I think, Anna, I don't know. Yeah. How do you feel? Yeah, the same. For example, they, they, if they ask you if the, if the students work in groups, should they each should each of the students have a, a role? The answer could be yes or no. And the important thing is that you are able to justify your choice. Um, and if the uh, panel doesn't agree, then perhaps you could explain why you decided to do that, but also acknowledge um, what they say and and agree that you're going to, you know, um, do some research uh, um, to know more about that particular issue. Um, but as long as you can justify um, your choices, I think that you're safe. Yeah. What kind of questions are generally asked? Well, they ask you about assessment because it's very important. You know, as Neus San Martí says, assessment is what drives your unit so you know you have to know why you're doing that and what you want your students to learn so assessment is a key element gender perspective is also a key element and inclusion i would say they can also they can also ask you about um group dynamics like grouping how you group your students for that activity you are presenting they can also ask you well how you adapt inclusion how do you adapt that for different students, you know, different needs. 
um this is all they can ask you if if you are presenting as i said before okay pbl is really trendy so i'm gonna do that but i don't know how to do it and you go there and you do it you present your pbl methodology your pbl unit but you don't know how it works so they are going to ask you questions and you won't be able to answer them so you have to be able to justify always what you were saying as anna said before is the language level that important it is of course <laughs> that is um in fact is one of the um I would say it's one of the key elements they assess the language level when they are grading us. So it's important to rehearse the oral presentation and also to write the topics. Yeah? Mm. Because then you get practice. Um, also knowing how much it takes you know, to develop the, the introduction, you have to limit you know, the time to, because generally we'll, we, we write online, or we write uh, in our computers, <laughs> we don't use uh, our pens any any longer, and, and that's, for some of you, going to be strange, so you need to get practice in that as well. Hmm. And it's very important to, sometimes we learn the units, um, and we know how to uh, well, the units, the topic units, and we know how to how to express them, but you have to use um, not only neutral, it has to be neutral, but you have to use technical vocabulary as well. That's important, and they value that, your use of the language, your comment of the language there. Mm. And this, for example, you can develop a unit very well, but if the language is very basic, you're not going to be graded that much although you have included everything. So they are, you know, grading the language in that part as well. Okay, so now it's your turn. The floor is yours. 